Golf Smarter Number 707 is brought to you by Autoslash.com, the completely free service that saves users up to 30% on their next car rental. Just make sure when you register, you have every one of your special membership codes and frequent flyer numbers so they can track that extra savings that come with those programs. So whether you're renting a car for business or pleasure, make sure you track it and save with Autoslash.com. Endorsed by Jack, Chi Chi, and Lee Trevino. Maybe Gravity Golf is right for you. Let's meet Daniel Lee. This is Golf Smarter. Sharing stories, tips, and insights from great golf minds to help you lower your score and raise your golf IQ. Here's your host, Fred Green. Welcome to the Golf Smarter Podcast, Danny. Hi, Fred. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you. You know, um, I'm excited to talk about Gravity Golf today because I've heard about it. I've not had a chance to study it. But uh, the thing that motivated me to get in touch with you was an email from a listener that says, uh, Hey, Fred, this is Paul Tarvados. And he says, uh, Golf Smarter continues to be my favorite golf podcast. Thank you, Paul. And he says, all 700 episodes, some 13 years. And you know what? I, I, I've received emails from Paul for all those 13 years, and I'm really grateful that he continues to listen. And he says, I need to recommend Gravity Golf for you to interview someone there. He said, I attended the three-day school there last September. They left me with homework that I did and continue to do when the snow disappeared, and my game has markedly improved. He said, I was drawn to Gravity Golf because I could never really understand what people meant when they told me, let the club do the work. By the outer exercises suggested by Gravity Golf, which I knew would take me out of my comfort zone, and David Lee's book and videos, and by the physics. Now, David Lee, who created Gravity Golf, is your dad, right? Yes, sir. And how long have you been working with your dad on teaching Gravity Golf? Oh, man. Um... So I, I mean, I used to go out and like help him with his schools when I was like six, seven, eight years old. Oh, wow. And then, yeah. And then we, we moved to, to Arkansas when I was, uh, I was about nine. We, we built our own facility. Um, we had a, a 64 acre training facility with three holes and a driving range. And so people would come in from, from all over the world. And so that's kind of, kind of how I grew up was, you know, first building the golf course. I've, I've kind of done just about everything in the business there is. Um, and so, yeah, I started, you know, being out there with his students and, and communicating with them. And then I started spending a lot of time when I was about 13, uh, 13 going on um, where I was out there all the time doing drills. And uh, when I was about 15 is actually when I, I started taking some of my own students. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I think the first the first students I ever had I, I remember was uh, was Donny Oswald and his kids uh, flew out from from Las Vegas uh, to spend some time with me for a few days and so it's yeah it's just been um, I guess that's kind of where it started. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So and you've been and and your whole life has been part of Gravity Golf. Your dad started Gravity Golf as, when you were a kid. Yeah, he started it uh, before I was before I was born. Okay. Uh, back in the the late seventies, I believe. Um, I forget exactly when uh, he initially put the name Gravity Golf to it. It was uh, it was actually uh, the old chairman of Augusta who was that named it originally. Really? Um, yeah, my dad was my dad was giving him lessons, and they were talking a lot about gravity. He was like, ah. Like that's what you need to call it, gravity golf. Wow! And so it's stuck, you know. Wow! Um, and, and and you know, it just it really exemplifies, you know, kind of the essence of, you know, what we teach. Anyhow, so it, it you know it, it fits quite well. Are you qualified enough to give us a little background on your dad's history of how he got to a place that he's giving lessons at Augusta? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think he was giving lessons at Augusta. I think he was a colonial uh, at the time, if I, if I had my facts straight. Um, I'm not going to dispute I, you, so you can make up anything you'd like. <laughs> yeah, right yes, he was he was teaching in Alaska on a <laughs> salmon fishing trip. Now, um, yeah, he's. I mean, I, I I definitely can you know give you give you a, a synopsis of you know what what 
what I've heard and, and what I know. Um, you know, he, he played on tour back in the 70s. Uh, he had grown up in Arkansas, actually went to school with Bill Clinton. Um, wow. And then it was later turned out, they ended up working together as one of his students. Um, and then he ended up being the, the, the captain of the golf team for the University of Arkansas uh, in his freshman year. And went through um, went through there for for a while. He didn't actually end up graduating. He he was switching programs and found out it was going to have to take him like another two years because he was going to lose some credits. And he just decided to go straight to the tour. And so he played out there for several years and spent a lot of time watching Nicholas and Trevino and Chichi. And you know he he really knew that there was something different they were doing, but he really wasn't sure at the at the time you know exactly what it was and so he he kept playing and he was he was doing all right but he was he was struggling a bit and then i believe it was in 77 he was practicing he was getting ready for a tournament in texas and the it was really cold and the ground was frozen and he hit a shot a little bit fat and it it, it broke a bone in his hand, uh, which he went and had x-rayed and they thought it was just sprained. So he continued playing and, you know, they just gave him some pain medication for it, but the bone ended up dying in his hand Oh! and he, he lost, um, Are you he lost, <laughs> no, sorry. I'm actually, I'm, <laughs> I had, a, did I say I something? A, it's like, where are you no, going? No, no, no. I just, I had someone was parked next to me. I'm sitting in my truck. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> yeah. Always get the best Wi-Fi out of your truck. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, yeah, just park, you know, like right at right at the peak of a mountain, so I can get those right waves. Oh my gosh! All right, go on with your story. I'm sorry to interrupt. <laughs> no, 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 sorry. I'll uh, have my window down. Um, so he, so he ended up, you know, he lost use of his hand for um, for a long time. Like he couldn't even pick up a water glass and. And he, he really got, you know, he started getting, you know, full time into to teaching. He was, he, he digressed. He actually went into a tackle business for a little while and then um, got into teaching golf. And I remember the story that I always hear from, which, you know, if, if you interview him, you can, you can get a lot more details. But um, he, well, it, what, what actually happened first was he got into fasting. Um, he got into doing these really long extended fast where he was fasting up to like, uh, 12 or 14 days, just drinking distilled water. And after about his third fast of, of doing that, he started regaining use of his hand. And, you know, the only thing that he really could decipher from that was that the bone ended up dissolving. Um, you know, but it was really crazy. He picked up this, this book from a guy named Paul Bragg called the, the miracle of fasting. And, you know, so after being years of, of not really being able to do much with his hand, he, you know, he regained use of it. Whoa. And, and then that kind of transition where he was, you know, he was out there, he was talking to somebody and he was talking about baseball players and how they stride into it. And he just, for, you know, some unknown reason started to stride into it where he would, you know, take a step forwards and said he hit he hit the ball better than he'd ever hit it in his entire life and that was the first time that he ever felt the gravity swing you know, where he had his mass in motion and and his arms were totally passive and it just it kind of clicked with him and then you know uh, he he went through this period and he was thinking well if I gotta do this out on the golf course I can't be on the right track and so he kind of set it down again for a little while but then he came back to it and, and it really dawned on him that there were more forces at play than what he had originally realized. And that was where he, when he first coined the, the term counterfall, uh, which has to do with the opposition of having the centrifugal force and the weight of your arm slinging in front of your body. So anytime that you're, you're making a, a rotational movement where you've got weight pulling on, on part of the body, it has to be offset because the body, the transversal muscles are very weak rotationally. So for instance, if you think about if you're out in the yard with a kid and you're swinging around, um, 
which they say is not a great thing to do nowadays, but I think everyone's probably done that at some point. Grab time. the kid by the arms and swing in circles? Yeah. 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 yeah okay. Know, yeah. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't do that, apparently. They say, their like, arms are going to come out of their sockets. They never have before. Yeah. Why do you think there's going to do Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Everyone, everyone's got to be afraid of something nowadays. Yeah. That's, right. That seems society tells us. But so, so, anyways, like, that you can see there how you have to lean back in order to offset their weight. And that's, you know, that's what allows to allows you guys to stay in, in rotary equilibrium. So, so to speak. And so his, his dad, my, my grandfather was a pathologist. So my dad, you know, grew up in a family of doctors mm. and had a good understanding of, uh, you know, how much human arms actually weighed. So when he started comprising that together and realizing that there was a lot of force that was actually being created from the arms slinging through, that you know there has to be a mechanism in order to offset that. And so that kind of started this this whole exploration of learning how to create rotary equilibrium, so to speak, in the swing, and really led him into you know what you see in guys like Freddie Couples or Ernie Els or just anyone that is swinging at a really highly efficient level and coming through very balanced. You know those those forces have to be offset. Mm. And you know there's you know from the technical aspects of it, you know there's the flexion in the knee and there's the extension of of the hip, and you know that's all all part of it. You know so there's there's a little different sequencing in the gravity golf swing than there is in in the way that most people traditionally try to swing a club, which I can I can get into a little bit more if you like. Well, let's take a, a quick break here for our sponsor, autoslash.com. Uh, you're, you're living, <laughs> you're traveling around the country in your truck, so you probably don't rent cars that much. But boy, if you were able to, if you did, you got to check out autoslash.com. Well, I, I do travel. You know, I still fly to a lot of different places. I I travel around with my camper and my truck, but that's cool. I would I would love to check them out. Oh yeah, you got to check out, and here's why. I've been thinking about this recently, and you know those commercials when they have like two guys who are doing the same thing at the same time, but one of them is getting great savings, and the other one's the buffoon who, but it's the same guy. <laughs> and he gets something different and doesn't take advantage. Well, that's what it's like with autoslash.com, right? So imagine these two guys who have rented cars online, and one of them secures his car and is happy and puts that in his file to say, okay, when we go on this trip, I'll pick up this car from this agency that I've reserved it for. And then the other guy, he reserves a car and then he goes to autoslash.com and he fills in all of his information and he puts in his coupon codes that he has and his memberships and his frequent flyer numbers and he tells them which car he's rented. And as the days progress before he starts his vacation or his business trip, he keeps getting emails from Autoslash saying, we found the car that you want at a lesser price. So he goes back and he cancels the car that he had and he registers for the car that Autoslash recommends. And he goes back and tells Autoslash, hey, I've already taken advantage of that. And then he continues to get emails so that the time that the two guys go to get pick up their cars, instead of paying for the same price for the same car that they reserved at the same time, Guy number one is paying 30% more. The guy number two who used Autoslash saved 30%. Now think about if you're saving 30% on a car that's going to cost you $500 for a week, that's a lot of money that you can use to go out to dinner, that you can use to do another activity with your family. So take advantage. It's a great service that's going to save you money on something you don't want to spend a lot of money on and allow you to spend that money if you're going to spend it anyway because you had already reserved the car with that extra money. You were planning on spending it. Now you're going to save that money and you'll have a much better time. That's what Autoslash can do for you. And that's what I love about this service. So take advantage of it. Go to your browser, bookmark autoslash.com, A-U-T-O-S-L-A-S-H. 
autoslash.com. And Danny, I hope that you do get to use it when next time you're uh, traveling someplace. Just check it out. Yep. Use these guys beforehand. You're going to save a lot of money on your next car rental. I promise. All right. Now, I wanted to, I wanted to get back to Gravity Golf because there's something that I've noticed in looking at your website. And, and this is very technical stuff, right? Um, and so I'm going to do my best to pay attention because I get lost on this sometimes, but on your website there, you know, you don't mention Ben Hogan. You talk about guys like Jack and Trevino and Chi Chi and, and, and Freddie couples. And, and you just mentioned Ernie more modern golfers, um, and not Ben Hogan. You know, you're not claiming that you found Ben Hogan's secret. No, I to really, I mean, to to kind of encapsulate this together and kind of give you a, a a better understanding of you know where we're really coming from. It's just about fundamental concepts of movement. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll, I'll kind of give you my this is this is one of my favorite analogies to use is imagine that you had to break down a door. Your life depends on it that you get to the other side of that door. If you started by going up and putting your nose right up against the door, you instinctually know that you don't have a lot of power. You would naturally, you would want to lean into it to get that kinetic energy moving to get your mass flowing in that direction. And essentially what you're doing is you're utilizing gravity. We do the same thing when we walk, when we learn to walk as a kid. You know, we, you know, our parents are standing there with their arms open. You know, we have this really strong intention to get from point A to point B. And from, from there, you know, our brain starts figuring out through proprioception, everything else, how far to actually let us fall in the direction that we want to go before we start moving our legs. And then we start finding the timing with that. And gravity golf is really just based around those, those fundamental concepts of movement, learning to balance out, you know, linear and rotational motion. And, and that's what we're doing. We're trying to, to give you the space in your swing so that you can actually flow into your shots and through them and get your mass moving in the direction that you want it to go. And what happens to most people, and this is the main reason for this is because we approach a golf ball that's sitting still. We're in almost every other sport, you know, baseball, tennis, soccer, you know, anything where the ball is moving at you, you have to learn how to move in the opposite direction. You have to be able to move towards your target. So it, it's a lot easier to get that, that natural sense of essentially dynamic alignment, being able to feel you know, that your body is moving forwards and that you know, there's another object moving towards you. And then you have to learn how to time that up. And what happens in golf, though, is most people, they take their address by going right up. They take the club, put it right down next to the ball. And inadvertently, what they do is they take their center of mass and push it right up next to the ball as well. Well, now what they've done is essentially the same thing as putting their nose up against the door. There's no room to actually get themselves moving forward. So you know, this starts all those, those old problems of swaying off the ball. They're trying to lean back away from the door so that they can then fall back into it to create power. And, you know, there's no room to actually get that kinetic energy flowing forwards, you know, towards their target and through the ball. So, you know, instinctually they're trying to pull it up and hit down on the ball looking for power. And that's why you see people falling backwards and falling out of balance. They're not in a state of flow in a in a way that their their mass is is actually moving in the direction that they want to go. So that's you know that's that's really where things start to uh, well essentially just get stifled for most players. They never really have the room to actually create natural power. And you know so there's a one of the drills that I do is I'll I'll have people you know address the club like a foot a foot behind the behind the ball and the ball way out to the left and then you know make their swing and actually walk through their shots so they really start feeling a lot of fall in the direction they want to go and 
you know, that's how they, they harness that kinetic energy. I mean, it just changes things like immediately. And I'll do that. I'll put them on uphill slopes and things like that where gravity's working against them and then add like a Gary Player-esque kind of walkthrough to it so that everything is focused on moving towards their intention. And uh, a friend of mine calls that having a good towards, and he's a, he's a one-arm player that uh, shoots, shoots in the low 70s. And it's, you know, it's amazing. Uh, I'm going to digress a little bit, but like I actually played this last year with uh, the world number one uh, uh, one-armed golfer. His name's Jesse. And I mean, we went out and played from 6,900 yards, and I watched him shoot 75. And I know that he's already documented in competition like more than 10 rounds in the 60s. Oh, my God. And he's playing with one arm. Oh. And Which arm? And thing, uh, he's, play, he's a lefty, actually. Uh, he's a southpaw. And so he's playing with his left it, hand his his backhand from the yeah but he, well he's playing he's playing um he is naturally a lefty and so he he throws it up high you know so he gets a full full arc size if you're playing from you know from the side of the ball as a right hander and you're using your left hand your arc size will be smaller so you won't have as much power sure so if you if you are a one hander you know if you are a one handed individual you're going to have your most potential power you know playing as a uh, you know, playing from the side of the golf ball, it's going to allow you to have the largest arc size. So, if you're a right-handed, that, if you're a right-handed one-hand golfer, you're playing with you're playing like you're right-handed. You're not playing facing left hand and playing right. with your right hand. Right. Okay. Right. That's that's going to give you the most uh, the most potential power. Yeah. You, know, you just think about it. It's yeah. You know, if you have a, a ball on the end of a string, the longer the string is, you know, the faster the ball is going on the on the outside. And so. Yeah, that's. It, it's just amazing how efficient and how easy the swing becomes on the body when you actually have room to move now. And you know, this starts bringing in the other aspects of alignment. Like most people, they go out there, they they get to their pro, and they they throw down some alignment sticks. They're trying to get their hips, their shoulders lined up at the target, and then lo and behold, the ball ends up going anywhere except in that direction. And you know, all this pretty much you know, says is that their understanding, their concept of alignment is, is skewed. It's definitely missing something. And that is the dynamic aspect of it. Um, and so I, I can draw you a little diagram here. If you ever use like a geometric compass in school, like it has a point in the middle and draws a perfect circle around it. Yes. So essentially the golf swing is working the same way. You've, you're swinging and on a, on a circle, on an arc, and the center point of that circle has to do with where your center of mass is. So if you balance your weight on your right leg, that's going to be your post right there. And that'll be the center of your center of your mass versus your left leg. You know, that'll be your center of your mass. And or if your your weight is in the, the middle of your stance, that's now your balance point. So what happens is as you're swinging around on this circle, the direction that the ball is going to go as long as your club face is square like you've gripped it square that ball is going to be spit off on a 90 degree angle relative to where your center of mass is so now you start understanding if you're swinging you know on the range and all of a sudden your ball takes off to the right of where you thought it was initially going to go you know that your center of mass has actually moved forwards changing that that 90 degree angle to the right hmm. so if you if you start off your your swing as most people do with their weight in the center of their stance and the club right up next to the ball and then they finish their swing and an impact their weights on their left foot you know as a right-handed player mm -hmm. then all of a sudden you know that whole center of mass has shifted you know a great amount to the left and that is changing that relative alignment to the right and and just vice versa, if you're finishing your shot and it's starting off to the left, you know that at the point of impact that your mass was actually moving back. And and this is where it you know it really gets interesting because you know if we come back to that that analogy of having enough space to move into the door, if you don't have enough space to actually have your mass um, moving into your shots. And, and actually starting off with your center of mass uh, far enough back. So you're actually starting off with a left alignment. 
then what happens is as your mass is moving forwards and all, if you subconsciously sense that your mass has moved past it, you can throw the brakes on trying to save alignment and trying to keep it, you know, trying to keep it moving in the direction you want to go and end up adding all this force to it and end up actually reversing it. And then you can snap hook it and, and do things like that. So it's, you know, you really have to feel alignment. You know, you have to be able to feel that it's almost like the ball is moving at you mm. and you're just moving towards your target. You know, just like if you were returning a volley, you know, in tennis, uh, which is, is a, actually a really good drill for learning how to feel this. Uh, a friend of mine who's been caddying out on tour for a long time and he's been with Chess and Hadley for a good time now. Uh, showed me this drill, and he's he's a big advocate of gravity golf, and uh, can demonstrate it really well. Um, which you can see, he rarely ever plays, but there was he went out like a couple of years ago, I remember, and uh, ended up beating Chesson uh, <laughs> when they went out and played played a U.S. Open course, and uh, that, was, that was pretty funny. But so he was showing me this drill where you put the you put the tennis racket in your your in dominant hand. So as a right handed player, you'd want to put it in your left hand. And you just, you, you return, uh, you, you volley, you know, just against like a wall. So, and what happens is if you're trying to force anything with the hand independently or the arm, um, you'll immediately lose the sense of the power and the direction that it's going. Hmm. But what happens is, th this is one of the other really great benefits to learning to play this way is it allows your upper body to become super passive. So what happens is all of a sudden that, that arm starts going to sleep and you're just moving your center of mass forwards and you start realizing how everything is just following that same flow. And then all of a sudden your hands are left to feel. You're not using them for power. So you can start feeling those little subtleties and angles of the racket. And the same thing translates into the golf swing. If your mass is moving in that direction, now you're riding something. Now you have a power source and everything else is just left to feel. So you can become incredibly soft uh, very, very quickly when all of a sudden you have room and space to move and you have, you know, using gravity as a natural power source. Okay, that's a lot to absorb. Um, we're going to take a short yeah. break and try to gather it all in. We'll be right back. This seems very counter to so much instruction that's going on today. Um, we've talked to people who have the easiest swing, the most anatomically correct swing, you know, starting in a position where you're, you don't even have a backswing, you just have the downswing. I've talked to so many instructors that have so many different ways of doing things. Um, and then there are the traditional teachers who have the straight mechanics and stuff. This is seems counter to a lot of traditional instruction. It it certainly can be, and and when my dad first started doing this stuff, it it definitely was taboo um, mm. because he was having people out there swinging one handed, one footed. Which, if if you kind of like go and look at instruction, all there's a lot of people starting to catch up with this stuff now. You see one handers are you know, very common. Um, one footers a little bit more so, um, not quite the way that, that we, uh, we would do them. Um, but you know, that stuff is slowly catching on as people are learning more and more about um, biomechanics and physiology and mm -hmm. um, proprioception, you know, like just how the body learns, like you have to create an apparatus, a uh, set and setting, so to speak, in which your instincts change, um, you know, for, for learning a swing, you need, for learning anything really, like you need to be able to create a sense of awareness. For, all, for instance, if, you're, if your mass is going in a whole lot of different directions, but all of a sudden you, you know, take one of your legs off the ground, now that circumference of balance, that safety envelope, so to speak, as we call it, shrinks dramatically. So if there's leverage being created from the upper body, it's going to threaten the whole system and your mm -hmm. brain immediately goes, Ooh, this is a really bad idea mm -hmm. and will change your natural instincts to save, save face. And 
there's a lot of different ways to do that, but that essentially is like the essence of how to train yourself more or less subconsciously. And it's, if you, if you listen to books like, or, or read books like, I do a lot of audible, so <laughs> it's kind of changed. And now, now you listen to books, you know? Oh yeah. Well, um, it, it, audio books are kind of a death to podcasts, but <laughs> yes, I do listen to audio books as well. I, I understand that I never thought about it that way. But, yeah, I know. Yeah. I was talking to some guys the other day, a bunch of podcasters and saying, yeah, I used to have Audible on there, but then I would realize that people were disappearing because they were started listening to audio books. So it's like, I don't want to promote them anymore. <laughs> Thank you, Amazon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so uh, a couple a couple good examples would be uh, Bounce uh, is a great book, uh, The Talent Code by Daniel Coyle. Um there's, I'm trying to think of another one I'm reading now. Um, I'd have to get into my Audible account to go look at it. <laughs> uh, but there's there's a whole lot of research being done on this now, realizing that you know if you if you create the right environment, you know you become a product of your environment. So if yeah. you have the right intention and you create the right set and setting, it starts creating these you know these natural emotions and these natural abilities. You keep referring and, to mass. What what? Yeah. Are, are you talking about the body when you say the, yeah, when the you body, say mass? the weight, uh -huh. the weight behind the body. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, when you're looking at, you know, how to create energy, you've got, you know, essentially mass times speed, you know, is creating, creating the amount of force that you have going forward. So what happens to most people, like I was saying before, if they don't have room to move forwards, if they make impact and their body mass is not releasing in the direction they want to go, they're not releasing the energy in that direction, then they're only hitting it with the force of their upper body, which now you're able to like start quantifying this stuff with smash factor and you know, weight plates and things like that. So the technology is just now like catching up to actually quantify this stuff and, and to validate it, which it does. That's the cool thing is like you can use all of the technology nowadays and it just validates all of this stuff that, you know, my dad's been teaching for a long time. And then, you know, I've started creating my own drills and things like that as well. And, but it's just, you know, that's what it is. You're learning to move mass. You're learning to move energy from one place to another. And I wanted to circle back because you were talking about uh, Nicholas and, and kind of like the absence of Ben Hogan and stuff like that. Before um, we do that, if you don't mind, yeah. well, you know, I usually try to get these at about 30 minutes and we're already there. So can we oh. do a part two of this? Can we make uh, just start a, another episode a, right now? And so we can have two, like a full hour of conversation with you. Do you mind that? I'm more than happy to. Awesome. All right. So part two of this conversation <laughs> with Danny Lee of Gravity Golf will be next week. So. Thank you very, very cool. much for for, for uh, joining in on this and for agreeing to do part two. Oh, that's it's my pleasure, Fred. This is uh, I'm really enjoying this. Well, so now that you know a little bit about Gravity Golf and that we're going to continue with a second part of this conversation coming up on our next episode, number seven hundred eight. Let me also share with you that I just got off the phone with Danny's dad, the creator of Gravity Golf, David Lee, and we are scheduled to record next week. So we're going to do three in a row on Gravity Golf. But from what I understand from Paul, who wrote the suggestion to have them on the show, that David is more about telling great stories and anecdotes from his time on the tour in the 70s than he is about doing golf. But on my phone call, it, it, he blew my mind with the stuff that he was sharing with me just about Gravity Golf and, and what happens there. So lots of exciting things coming up on, on the Golf Smarter podcast, including a bunch on Gravity Golf. But that's not all. If Gravity Golf intrigues you, then I encourage you to go to gravitygolf.com and while you're there, check out the Gravity Golf Challenge. But, and here's a spoiler alert, don't make any purchases yet because not only do we get a much better sense of what's behind Gravity Golf and how it works, but Danny provides Golf Smarter listeners with an incredibly generous offer. He surprised the heck out of me. And it may that offer may get you a little more serious about incorporating Gravity Golf into your game. 
I, I think that it's a significant discount on a, a not a high ticket item when you talk about lessons, but this discount's going to help. Our next giveaway is for another $100 Amazon gift card, courtesy of our friends at autoslash.com. And that deadline is coming up. Hopefully you didn't miss it. It's Sunday, September 22nd, 2019 at midnight Pacific time, 3 a.m. Eastern. To go and register, please come to golfsmarter.com and click on the giveaway banner at the top of the homepage. And uh, at the end of this week, I'll be sending out our regular email to remind you to register to win. But also, I'm going to share some more videos from both Gravity Golf and last episode with Jeff Ritter on Make the Turn. So there's going to be more video in this email as well. This week on Golf Smarter Mulligans, we're graced by another visit from Dr. Joseph Parent, author of one of golf's most popular mental game books of all time, Zen Golf. And he's going to be talking about his second book, Zen Putting, Mastering the Mental Game Around the Greens. And in this conversation, Dr. Joe provides helpful insights on how to improve our mental game on the scariest part of any golf course, the putting green. But he also provides helpful tips on how to get out of your own way with the putter in your hands. Golf Smarter Mulligans is supported by Autoslash.com and TwoGuysWithGolfBalls.com. So get your free subscription to either or both. Actually, Get your free subscription to both episodes, both podcasts, Golf Smarter and Golf Smarter Mulligans, wherever you get your favorite podcasts. And if you have any questions, comments, or great suggestions like we got from Paul on Gravity Golf, click on the Hey Fred button at GolfSmarter.com.